What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Ralph Graves Jr. Show. You see me jostling things around because we have our Instagram viewers on as well, trying to set them up, give them a better view. But thank you guys for being on. There we go. Okay, it's a little bit better. Thank you guys for being on this program. It's another Wednesday. What's today's date? Today is April 21st. 21st, 21st, man, 21st. And it's 10 a.m. on a Wednesday, and we are here. Welcome, guys. Kair, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, good, good. And ladies and gentlemen, for the very first time on the Ralph Grace Jr. Uh, Unstoppable program, um, this is our, our very first time is having this young lady uh, under this name as my co-host. Ladies and gentlemen, my daughter, Janae Padilla. Ah. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, hey, what's going on, X Athletics? What's happening, man? For those of you who don't know, Janae got married this uh, this weekend. Janae got married this past weekend to a great guy. My, my mom joined the Instagram live to a great guy, and um, and Janae got married. So Janae Padilla is in the house. So glad to have you guys here on this day. Now, today's topic, right? Today, have you ever been in it? And I wanted to have, hey, Amy, Amy Martinez. Let me say something about Amy Martinez, right? <laughs> Amy, we're talking about you today. Yeah. Because in, in a great way, Amy, because you're and guys, if you haven't go over to my YouTube channel, go over to my Spotify, listen to my episode with Amy Montanez. Amy, your episode that we had together is the most watched and most listened to episode. I got 40, 40 Spotify episodes, 40 Instagram posts. Amy, yours is the most watched and listened to. So guys, don't miss out. Amy has some great things to say, great story. Thank you, Amy, for being a part of that program. And thank you for uh, joining uh, the program today. <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there. She was a great guest, everybody. So good morning, everyone. We are talking about, Shauna, what's happening? Tiny Hopkins over on Instagram Live. She's in there. Um, Ryan Leafy is in over on Instagram Live. Sandra Graves over there. Mom showed up on Instagram Live. Joy Smith is here. Today, guys, we're talking about um, 10 ways to master the art of small talk, right? We talked about, we, we talked about being, you know, everyone communicates, few connect. We talked about that past couple of weeks. There is an art to small talk. And I noticed that we're at, we're at my, my daughter's reception and, and, you know, everybody pretty much knew everybody. But when you sit at a table and the world opens up, you might meet some people. There's an art to small talk to where you can really make a connection. And so we're gonna talk about the lost art of small talk. It's, um, I like I like how like, I, I don't know if they're numbered for a specific reason or anything like that, but yeah, number yeah. but number one, when we get to it, is the one I can never get past. And so I never get <laughs> to the yeah. other nine because number yeah. one, uh, I'm like, yeah, so, just whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, first of all, I, I want to, again, if it's your first time watching and listening, I do pastor Cornerstone Community Church in Millville, New Jersey. Be there. I've been there 15 years, you know, was celebrating pastoral anniversary. Um, you know, son, I'm not really having a celebration, but just mentioning it, that I'll be there 15 years at, at uh, on, on Sunday. So we praise God for that, planted that 15 years ago. And um, God is doing remarkable things, uh, uh, allowing us to do some great things through the saving knowledge and power of his son, Jesus Christ. And so we're there doing that. Lord World, what's, what's, what's going on, Lord World? I think he's over in Great Britain. Lord World over on Instagram. Okay, so what we're talking about today is mastering the art of small talk. It is so important and it's something that's overlooked. And it's something that people are, I don't say creeped out about, but apprehensive to do, apprehensive to, to begin a conversation. Small talk. Hey, what's going on, Mike? Let's move to Barbara. Small talk is not about, you know, um, someone hitting on you. Someone trying. No, it's just, hey, we're in the same room. And it's small talk. You never know what might come out of the small talk. And there's an, there's an art to that. There's an art to that. Let me ask you, ladies, first of all, before we start, how do you guys feel about small talk? We, we talked a little bit about this in the office yesterday when we were producing the show. And Kair said something I thought was pretty funny. You said it does what? Small talk. It just kind of makes you like, oh, yeah, like in your head, like, oh my God, I wish they stopped talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> and Janae, Janae, how do you feel about small talk sometimes? Hey, 
Uh, it, I it just, it's hard. It's just, why is this happening? Yeah, yeah. But we are by nature communicators. And everybody that's talking to you, ladies, is not trying to pick you up, not trying to take you home, right? Guys, every woman that's talking to you, don't, don't, she don't necessarily think you're fine. She don't necessarily want you. All right. It's small talk. This is how human beings communicate with one another. You know, so how, it is an art to being cordial. There's an art to master when it comes to small talk. Here we go. Point number one. We're going to talk about this today. I hope this blesses somebody. I hope this blesses somebody. Point number one, relax and be present in the conversation. Relax and be present in the conversation. Exactly, Anthony Jones said it on Facebook Live. Could lead to endless opportunities. You were in. You were invited to the room. You were invited to the party. You're at the meeting. You're on the Zoom call. So you belong there. All right. Maybe the only thing you and the other person you have in common with is the ground that you're standing on in that particular moment. Deshona Clark hit the nail on the head. She says, sometimes small talk opens the door to possibilities and opportunities. Both both, both entrepreneurs said that because they understand what, what it means. Relax. Don't, the palms shouldn't get sweaty. It's just small talk. Be present. Rather than, rather than try to plan, I'm going to say something, Janae. Let me get my statement out. <laughs> Janae's like, wait a minute. Rather <laughs> <laughs> then try to plan what you will say next. Relax. Focus on what the other person is actually saying. Listen. Be present in the conversation. The other person will notice. They'll feel appreciated and the conversation will flow naturally. When you feel appreciated by the other person you're talking to, the conversation really flows. So make them feel appreciated. Be present in the conversation. Janae, you're about to say something. Yes, I had a question because yeah. is this the person? Okay, so we're talking about mastering the art of small talk. So yeah. you're yeah. the person, this is for the person who is going to initiate the small talk. And I think this or is both, does it go both. This is this is both sides of it. Okay. Both sides of it. You okay. Know, the, the loneliest person in the room is the person no one's talking to. I've been there. I don't agree. When I said, but they were invited and you sit and, and the nervous and the anxious, the angst, I should say, rises. So I, I'm the guy who tries to work his way around the room. I try to make everybody in there. What's going on, um, Flash, Michael? I try to make everybody in the room feel like they belong in the room. Mm -hmm. I like so, watching people small talk. Like, it's like, wow, so, look at them go. So sometimes, so... If you, you guys are watching this, you guys are leaders. You guys are, are, are heading in your field. I have a lot of entrepreneurs, solopreneurs on here. A lot of you are part of the, um, the, part of the uh, community, right? Part of the unstoppable community, all right? And so we can't get to a room and just want to disappear in the corner and leave and pretend nobody noticed that you were there. We have to the, we have to master the art of small talk, and I'm not really talking about giving your seven second elevator speech. We're going to get to that too. We're going to talk. Small talk is not about getting that right. Um, Angie Acevedo says it turns into networking for her. Exactly. Okay. So relax and be present in the conversation. Relax, be present in the conversation. Um, Lord World says this, how the conversation starts is what makes small talk difficult. Like he says, like someone said, like nice weather today, huh? Yeah. You're, you're yeah. Absolutely right, Lord World. Thank you for saying that. Great, Janae. You agree, you agree with him wholeheartedly, right? I do. I do. And, and, but the rest of the points kind of like help that out because, you know, like I said yesterday with, uh, something, some, something someone said to Sydney was just like so random and <laughs> it was like do you like jazz and yes. and she was like 20 at the time and I don't know that many like 20 year olds that like actively listen to jazz no. um and she was just like no <laughs> if you guys are initiating the small talk we're going to talk about how to initiate it as well read the room don't be a creep 
<laughs> All right, don't be a creep. Don't walk up to a 20 year old young lady like our my my adopted daughter. Somebody walked up to her and said, so do you like jazz? Okay, they creeped her out. Okay, read this now. <laughs> you start small talk. My mom says over at Instagram Live, she said small talk is done everywhere. The grocery store, the doctor's office, anywhere, right? You don't have to be doing anything sometimes, but smile, sometimes small talk. That's how small talk can begin, okay? All right? Don't be creepy at the small talk. Lord world says they'll just wake up, walk up to people and say, hey, it was great weather. Read the room. Where are you? Where are you? Did something occur? You know, did something happen? Like, you know, whatever the case, but, but read the room. Joy Smith says this, she says, small talk isn't about uh, what you know. For me, it's about getting to know you exactly. All right, getting to know you. Aunt Jones, closed mouths don't get fed. The more you talk, the more room for networking, which creates more leads, which creates more opportunities. Open up your mouth, relax, be present in the conversation. Again, all of this has to do with the environments that you're in. If you're at a networking event with other entrepreneurs or solopreneurs, all you guys there for the same reason, getting a small talk around that. If you're at a wedding, wedding reception, all of you there for the same reason. So who's out of the family? One bridegroom, you know, you have to start the small talk there. Meet on common ground, okay? All right, questions, comments, concerns? Anybody about that? All right. This is rolling right along. It's 12, it's, it's 12 minutes after. Okay, second thing, read a lot. Read a lot. Reading a lot will help you in small talk. Reading a lot. The more you read, the more dumb stuff you pick up, like dumb stuff, like trivia facts or whatever, right? You can turn into conversation material. It can be online, books, materials, journals, but it can help drive conversation with someone you don't know much about. Somebody you don't know much about. All right. So read. Open up your mind. Don't don't just, you know, sit around. You never know what you don't have to be an expert in the conversation that someone brings up, but have a working knowledge of it. Have a working knowledge of it. You have to be, you know, I, I, re, I never forget. Most guys meet on in my world, in my world, not 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 necessarily most guys. Most guys can find a sport that we can talk about a team, a person that we just, that, that kind of begins the conversation. I was somewhere one time and I think I was a police officer at the time and I said something to somebody and dude, I don't, I don't like sports. I, and at this time, at that time, I didn't, I didn't, wasn't as sharp as I am now. I just determined that I don't like you, but I mean, that was wrong. <laughs> that was wrong. But um, I don't want to ever come off like that to someone to where if they bring up a topic, I know zero about. Remember, small talk can lead to other opportunities. So where I find, I, I, so I read a lot, a lot of different things that I may not be interested in. I may not have a complete working knowledge, but I'm in, kind of informed about it. Like, I, you know. I think the biggest, um, the biggest like small talk book I ever read was that book about salt. Either, yeah. either the history of salt or the lost art of walking. Those are two, <laughs> those yeah, books yeah. got a lot of what? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, well, did you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, have you guys read anything that that's just in, like, that could be interesting that could lead to small? Like, I never read the book, The Lost Art of Walking. That seems like a good read. That seemed mm -hmm. like, like, wow, okay, man. You know, like you that, 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 that kind of sparks my interest. Yeah. You know, so read a lot, read a lot. You don't have to know everything, but read a lot. You know, um, hey, Kingsport Transportation showed up on Instagram Live. He's the guy, Janae. Hey. You, did your, you did your limousine ride there. Yeah, my party bus. The party <laughs> bus, the party bus. Hey, man, good to, good to see you on here. Good to see you. We're talking about the lost art of small talk. Guys, the word of the day. Because every, I'm going to take a break, but we're going to give you the word of the day because I want you to think about how to use it in the sentence. The word of the day has always, I told you guys, I always give a word of the day that stems from my defeats over and over again in the game of Scrabble when it comes to my wife. And someone said, well, how do you lose all the time if you read a lot? Well, you know, she starts winking at me, smiling. She got them dimples and I just turned them mush. I can't think of anything. So I got a book called... Um, 
What was it called? It's called 1200 words that you should know to sound smart. Like this helps too in small talk. So I've been giving you a word of the day every week. So today's word is, say it with me. Maleficence. Maleficence. I said it wrong. Maleficence. The pronunciation is right there. Yeah, the pronunciation is right in front of me. Maleficence. You might remember that that Disney word, but it's spelled for my Instagrammers. M-A-L-E-F-I-C-E-N-C. Maleficence. Now, it means, it's a noun, to act in a way that deliberately causes harm, behavior driven by evil intentions. So when we come back off a break, I want to see if you guys can put that together in a sentence for me, guys. All right. So you've been watching the Ralph Grace Jr. show or listening or share with somebody on Instagram, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. You're here. Praise God for you. We have a couple commercials going to run. We'll come back. We're going to get back into the lost ways and uh, the lost ways, the lost art of mastering small talk. Deshauna, yeah, I see that you know how to spell it, right? But I want you to use it in a sentence when I get back, when I get back. All right, everybody, we'll be right back after these messages. Hydration is a proud sponsor of the Ralph Graves Morning Show. Revive Hydration is the first IV hydration and vitamin infusion service in the South Jersey area. For more details, please visit their website at www.revivehydration.com or you can give them a call at 856-485-0070. Again, their website www.revivehydration.com or give them a call at 856-485-0070. Hey guys, Ralph Graves here. Thank you for coming to the website. Thank you for your interest in the Gulfstream way. Now don't hesitate. The Gulfstream way will do three things. It'll grow you as a person. It'll grow you as a leader so that you can make impact in your world today. So do not hesitate. Jump right on it. I'll see you soon. Thanks. meet your daughter anyway are we back yeah we're back. i was over on instagram live and i was talking to mike over there because he has daughters and he gave me a congratulations on giving you a wage and the new my new son-in-law things like that Thank you. that he needs to start praying for his daughter's mates right now your daughter's mate right now he has daughters so you need to start praying for him right i prayed for my son-in-law and when i say that not because i knew him i i learned i began to pray that God would prepare the man that my daughter needed and prepared her to be the woman that this man might need. I didn't know his background. I didn't know what, listen, you don't know who your daughter's gonna date. You don't know who your son gonna date. You don't know what kind of trauma they had when as a kid. You don't know what they're gonna bring to the table. Start praying for these unknown people right now. If you're a believer and you believe in the power of prayer, start praying for them right now they're gonna walk into your family you, you better hope <laughs> just start praying for them right now i got i'm blessed my, my son-in-law is is phenomenal young man i'm blessed he's outstanding young man and and we continue to pray for them but anyway hope y'all receive that that was my little message to to mike over there on instagram live but the rest of y'all were watching so I might as well share it with you anyhow we're talking about Mastering the art of small talk. Point number one was relax and be present in the conversation. Point number two was read a lot. 
Point number three, and let's discuss this. Be interested in things so that you are interested. Interesting. Be interested in things to be interesting. Okay? Actually be interested. What are you talking about, Pastor Graves? When you find that people have nothing to say, they don't seem to have any interest. When, you, when people have nothing to say, they don't have any interest in anything. That makes them uninteresting. However, people with hobbies and interests always seem to have a topic or opinion to share, and they can use that as a launching point to get someone else involved in the discussion. Be interesting. Like like the guy you just mentioned who didn't like sports. He could have he could have just been like, oh, you know, I don't really do sports, but I'm really into puzzles. Exactly. And I would have jumped right into the whole puzzle thing. I would have said you like 500 or 1500 pieces. I don't know. But but just don't be, I don't like it. I don't like cooking. You know, hey man, I really don't follow sports, but I spent a whole lot of time in the kitchen. I started yeah. talking about recipes galore. Yeah. You know. He just didn't want he just didn't want to talk. He just Yeah, he just didn't want to be bothered with me. Um, <laughs> you have to be able to read that too, if someone doesn't want to be bothered with you. But if we're stuck at a table, <laughs> if we're stuck at a table. You know, that's your assigned seat. You went to a wedding, you went to a party, you went to a reception, you went to a banquet. How many times have you gone to a banquet? The world's going to open back up. It's bad enough we have masks on, so you can't tell if they're smiling or not. You've got to really read the eyes. Are the eyes smiling? So you don't know if someone's saying something out of jest or saying something uh, and, and really mean it, whatever. And so you're going to be sitting at the, you're going to be sitting at the, uh, at the table. You know, you might as well find something interesting to talk about. Master in small talk. Deshaunna Clark says this. She says, um, the enemy tries to, I can't even say the word, <laughs> maleficent to God's people, but it won't work. It won't prosper. It won't prosper. 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 All right. Very good, Deshaunna. Deshaunna gets 10 points. I wish I had a bell to ring. Ding, 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 ding. 10 points to Gryffindor. Yes, 10 points to Gryffindor over there. 10 points to Deshaunna. Clark, for you in a sentence. Uh, Doug Walden says this on Facebook Live. My mentor, my counselor told me, know a little, know a little bit about a lot that helped him. I'm just, I'm just, you're trying to, listen, you're trying to sell your product. You're trying to sell you. You're just trying to be a corporate person. You're just trying to be likable. You're just trying to make it through the evening. Develop small talk. And I'm going to tell you, right, what I, I still go out a lot. Nothing gets me service like small talk. When I, I still go out a lot, man, I still hit the restaurant, you know, still take my wife out and I make my server, I find common ground with my server and we have conversations to where they get in trouble sometimes. They spend too much time at my table, but my service goes through the window. And of course I tip them accordingly, but it's small talk. They take care of me. He's handling my food. She's handling my food. Why wouldn't I be interested in what they're, why, why wouldn't I want to find common ground with these people? I like the uh, the progressive commercials where uh, they're telling you, like, you don't have to become your parents when you get a new house. Yeah, but you should sometimes. And, he's, and he, <laughs> he was like, he's like, the waiter doesn't need to know your name. <laughs> like, yeah. Mine does. Mine does. Mine does. They take care of you. They take care of you. I, I've had the chef come out because of my way, because of my server. So Flash Lewis says this often people want to talk about themselves, but they have to be given a reason to feel like they want to be heard. Sometimes simple as, hey, how was your day? Or framing a question. So what do you think about? Exactly. This guy gets it. All right. People's favorite subject is themselves sometimes. So find it. We're talking about small talk. We're talking about opening up opportunities. We're talking about we're talking about being the person that God created you to be. If you were meant to be alone, God would not have created other humans. God would have left Adam in the garden all by himself. All I need is my cat. OK, we'll see how you and your cat work out. All I need is my dog. If that was the case, God wouldn't have created other human beings. Right. Learn the art of small talk. And, and something else begins to happen. Um, and Tiny, I see, Tiny says this, um, Tiny over on Instagram Live, she says, my husband does this all the time and has taught her a lot. Yeah, I know her husband's a great communicator, great communicator. But I'm going to tell you what small talk also does. 
it causes you to do something. Listen to this, Mike. Listen to this, Flash, Lois, Anthony Jones, Shauna Clark. You guys already get it. It causes you to be. It causes you to be able to cross pollinate. You're learning about other people and their worlds. You're learning about. Uh, you're, you're 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 taking. You're you're cross pollinating. Sometimes we just stay in our own worlds with our own audiences, with our own people, right? And you cross when you have small talk, kind of small talk. You cross pollinate. You never know what's going to happen in an area or in a culture that you've never stepped into before. Stop looking at other cultures and other people like, oh, my God, they're different. You never know what you might learn. You never know that, that you never you might find out God wants to use you over there. You never know. Um, Angie Acevedo says this. Nothing is more maleficent than someone cutting me off on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> she gets 10 points, 10 points over there to Angie Acevedo. She used the word of the day in a sentence. Very good. Um, my mom said something about small talk too. My mom said, yeah, small talk. Lawworth says, really curious about how to start small talk. I'm going to get to that as I would not want to be maleficent. Very good on the conversation, right? How do I start it? What people are using this word. They're using this word. 10 points for law world over there. Uh, and we're going to, I'm going to teach you how to start it. We, that's, that's toward the end. That's toward the end. I'm going to give you one pointer now to start small talk. Um, hey, real quick. Real quick, Janae, or let's get to um, let's get to our six cents, Kair. Okay. Love this part of the program. We're going to come back to the other stuff. We got to get to our, our six cents. Listen to this and we'll, we'll dive into it. What's up? Dear six cents crew. My husband and I are planning a trip to Disney World several months from now. Today, I received an email from my sister saying that her daughter, Hillary, is thinking about joining us on the Disney trip. Would you be able to give her some additional information about what is planned? Hillary was never invited to join us. She is lovely, but it is not possible for her to come along on this vacation with us. It is causing grief for my family. It is not as simple as saying no. My family will be considered the bad guys if we do. Please advise me how to handle this without causing family strife. Can you do me a favor? What's the, what's Hillary's problem with the family? The family just doesn't like her. It doesn't say. Um, I, it's her niece. That's all it says. It doesn't say anything about their history with each other. All right. Let's see. It says it says a lot about their history with each other. If it was an email, if <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. but then why would you invite your daughter? Like, why would you? If you guys have beef with each other, like why are you even emailing your sister? Yeah, like how you daughter along. And like how old is she? Because it seems like it's something the daughter like decided on her own. Cause she's asking <clears throat> the sister's asking the sister for additional information on the trip so that the daughter can like plan with them on her own. So it's like I don't know. Yeah. yeah. My advice for her not to cause strife is to just say no and leave it. Like, and she said that it's not as easy as saying no, but that's the that's always the easiest is just saying no and we then carrying. You know? What'd you say? I said we just don't respond. You know, that's always easy. Or yeah, it was an email. Like, oh, I didn't get it. Yep. Yeah, it wasn't. Email. My goodness. Oh, you, don't have to lie. you got you got to lie, Miss Padilla. <laughs> Well, I said I would just say no. And then and then it was just like, you know, no, she can't go. Here's the key. The key to having a good time also is the guest list. The key to having a good time is your environment. The key to having a good time is, is you know, I often said this before. My wife gets to pick the destination all the time. But I have to pick who's coming with us. And, and she's good at that, too, because um, who you're with can ruin a phenomenal destination. Mm -hmm. So you're in charge of that. Uh, if the woman does show up, then hey, listen, you just, you you know, they said it's a cruise or is it not a cruise? What is it? No, it's just a trip. Oh, I, hey, there's a lot of places where you can you can disappear from them too. But that, <laughs> that, that's crazy, boy. That, that's I crazy. don't understand how like people's family dynamics, I mean like, you know, I, you know, I'm blessed. To have a family that's not crazy, but like I'd be like, what? Like that doesn't even it doesn't even make sense. I feel like I can't yeah. even give good advice on that because I have no idea what that even. What, Does anyone out there have a crazy family that want to give advice on that? 
that, I, that I has experienced something like this. I don't say crazy family, but yes, has experienced something like this. Dysfunction. It's dysfunction. Yeah, if, it, it's dysfunction. if saying no causes will cause family strife, it's yeah. dysfunction. Yeah. <laughs> if you care to share, please, please share with us. Um, if you care I, I, I'm not good at that. I'd be like, what do you mean you can't say no? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I can I can say no, like no, I'm sorry, you're not invited this time. You and mommy did that all the time to us while we, like when I was in college, you guys would just be gone, and I'd be like, oh, can I come? And you'd be like, don't you have plats? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned that from my parents. I learned that from my parents. Hey, can we come with y'all? Not tonight, partner. <laughs> no. You know, you, you just get over it. You'll get over it. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about small talk, guys. We're talking about small talk. But if you haven't, go over to um, RalphGravesJr.com backslash community. Become part of the unstoppable community. I put the, the, the videos I'm posting up, if I say so myself, are phenomenal. I'm learning as I post them. I got some great stuff coming up. We have a book club that's beginning that's going to actually be free to those who are part of that community. Now, but if you want to go through Unstoppable with me, it's, it's, Kaya, tell them about it, please. The Unstoppable Book Club? Yes. So it's a virtual book club. It starts on April 29th. It's going to be every Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, you can sign up on RalphGravesJr.com. It's $50 to join, but that does include, um, it gives you access of the Unstoppable community for three months. Three months. Um, and then to purchase your copy of Unstoppable, it can be purchased on BarnesandNoble.com, Amazon.com, or RalphGravesJr.com. Yeah, I'm excited about that. You know, we'll be virtual. If you want, we'll go through the chapters together. Um, it's wide open for the those who are already involved in the Unstoppable community. If that's only ten dollars a month, you guys just jump right on that. We'll walk through that together and grow together some more. And and um, but but guys, jump on over there if you can. Also, too, let's not forget the Gulf Stream Way. Ninety days. Personal growth and transformation. That's what that's what the unstoppable community is all about. It's about personal growth. About personal growth. So come on and be a part. If you haven't listened to it, jump on over to wherever you find your podcast. Um, the Ralph Graves Jr. or the Unstoppable Podcast, Ralph Graves Jr. This past week I talked to Tim James. We talked about the importance of gut health, which is I can't even I mean, it's just phenomenal what we talked about. But there's so many episodes on that. You'll see my my episode with Amy Montanez. We talked to Amy when we first started the program. Matter of fact, her episode is the most listened to and the most viewed podcast that we have going on over there today. Um, so, guys, just jump on that. Jump on that. All right, we're talking about the art of small talk. Here we go. Point number four. Number four. Point number four. Ask thoughtful questions, then follow up. Here I am. I'm having small talk. I'm relaxing. Okay. My palms. All right. Some people are anxious about this. All right. It's a room full of strangers. All right. Sometimes the palms sweat and the baldy might sweat, whatever the case. Relax. Be present in the conversation. All right. I've read a lot. So I can pretty much talk about everything that's happening. I'd be interested to be interesting. So I need to be interested in other things to be interesting. And now I'm going to ask thoughtful questions and then follow up. Whoever's asking questions, here's a little secret that most people don't know. Whoever is asking questions is actually steering the conversation. You never thought that. Great questions make great leaders. Who's ever asking the questions is actually steering the conversation. It's not who's talking, it's who's asking questions. So ask thoughtful questions and then follow up. Right. Some people despise small talk, but they love connecting with new people. Right. And you learn about them because there's always something interesting about who you are talking to. Right. Um, if you actually care through your thoughtful questions and you're asking thoughtful questions, really listen to their answers, then ask a great follow up question based on their response. You see what's happening now? You have now taken control of the conversation and you are talking to them about their favorite subject themselves. They are loving you right now. 
They are opportunities are open. They are loving you right now, right? Because you're asking great follow up questions, and you are actually being thoughtful. You're not being manipulative. You're you're actually being thoughtful, right? Your boring small talk chat can quickly evolve into something meaningful. You might have an encouraging word to say. My mom said on over here on Instagram Live, she said, small talk is a great way to show the love of God in us. You don't have to tell everybody that you're a Christian or that you're born. People don't want to hear that, but they'll be able to see that and how they communicate with you. Then eventually somebody's going to ask you, listen, there's something different about you. And now you can share the love of God, the love of Christ. But at first, you have to ask thoughtful questions and follow up. Does that make sense, ladies? That makes sense. How does it feel? Let me ask you guys this, right? You guys are you guys are young and, and you've moved past, okay, this 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 man or this man ain't trying to pick me up and this woman's not being creepy. You move past that, right? You're at step number four, and they're asking thoughtful questions with follow-up. How does that make you feel when someone's asking you thoughtful questions with follow-up? Um, uh, uh, you know, it makes it feel like, okay, we're, maybe we're not just, you know, trying to like eat up time. Like maybe, okay, this person cares a little bit. I guess I can yeah, give them yeah. a, a good answer, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just, it's fine. It, it, it makes me feel fine. Right, right. <laughs> like at ease, like you said, you you realize they're not trying to be like manipulative. They're not going to try to sell you something at the end of the conversation. And then you're just yeah. like, ah, OK. Yeah. But like, it's just like, oh, OK, this is nice. This is nice. I can do this. Yeah. yeah. Very good. What about you, Kyer? Yeah, I was going to say it definitely eases the moment because it's kind of like not really tension, but especially when the conversation isn't wanted. Like if you think someone's trying to like get at you or something, like, oh, like I wish, like I said, like I wish you stopped talking to me. But once yes. you get like the thoughtful follow-up questions and then you can just end it on like a peaceful note, like, yeah, all right, well, nice talking to you. Right. It was fine. And you feel like, like, it's like you know the person. It's like you're comfortable with the person. Like you wouldn't be afraid. Okay, you know, yeah, I, I met them before. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The art of small talk. Hey, um, Amy Martinez over on Instagram Live, she said, I have a crazy family. My advice is just have boundaries and never be afraid to say no. <laughs> Thank you, Amy, for being so yeah. transparent. She said, I have a crazy family. Just listen, just don't be have to create boundaries and don't be afraid to say no. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Uh, Flash Lewis says on Instagram Live, with good follow up, the, um, with with good follow up, it, it does make a person feel like you're being genuine because really you should, guys. I want you to be genuine. When a person feels like that, they are more reluctant um, to further engage in the conversation. When when they don't feel like you're being genuine, they could be reluctant to further engage in the conversation. Be genuine. Yeah, like it's, you, because it's not like it's like not trying to be like, you know, your best friend, you know, just, right. just talking, you know, <laughs> we're, just, yeah. we're just talking. Yeah. I wish I could be like um, Manny and his, he can small talk. Oh, yeah. Now listen, nobody can, nobody, and that's a lot of children. <laughs> Watch a child. A child can master the art of small talk. You know why people love children? Because children <laughs> care. And there's something genuine if you ever get in a conversation with a child. They can master. They'll constantly ask you why. They constantly try to, like Flash Lewis says, build trust. Yeah, they they all they're always asking, like, well, what's yours? Like, which one do you like? Well, why do you like that one? Right. <laughs> well, why do you like? Why, why do you like that? Or, or what is yours? And why do you like it? That that's that's awesome. I mean, they they do that. It's after we get older, we put up these boundaries. We put up. We have to be cool. We have to be. You know, we're always watching what we say. Always have to say the right thing. Right. Always say, we, we look for our audience, our crowd. We have preconceived notions about other races, other people, of the professions. And we have all these all these walls that keep us from communicating, that keep us from small talk, if you will, that might lead to um, greater opportunities and greater things. It's an art to it, guys. It's an art to it. We are a global community. We are. 
Just because we have two different beliefs doesn't mean that we can't communicate on some common ground. It doesn't, doesn't mean that, that, that all of a sudden I'm going to adopt this belief system because I met on the common ground about sports with this person or hobbies or cooking, fishing or dancing, whatever it is, just because I met on common ground. And I think we, we, keep, those, we keep those barriers up and those walls up um, a lot. So this is an art to small talk. Uh, Angie, um, Angie Acevedo says, small talk is harder with a mask on your face. It is because you know what? A lot of set through, it's set through body language and facial expressions. Okay, now point number five. Now after the follow-up, after you've asked thoughtful questions, listen, will you take a minute to listen? Listen, don't look beyond them and say, oh, my God, I need to talk to them. I need I need to get over there and talk. I see so-and-so. Let me go talk to them. Listen, so-and-so is not going to leave. The most important conversation is the one you're involved in. All right. Can we all agree on that? The most conversation at the moment is the one you're involved in at the moment. It just is. Be present. It just is. Ask questions and listen. People love to talk about themselves. We already established that. Um, you can get great if you guys are entrepreneurs. And hey, hey, my brother joined. Hey, Ty, what's going on? Iron on my man, my mind over Instagram. You can get great business information by just listening what other people have to say, whether it's work related or not. Just listen to them. Listen to them. Often it's about reading between the lines listening to what they're not saying to get a good understanding of what type of person they are and what they want and how you can supply what they need. All right. That, that's what listening brings about. Nobody really cares. Let me talk to my entrepreneurs, solopreneurs. Let me talk to some other people. Let me even talk to my Christians. I let me talk to everybody. Nobody cares what you're selling. Nobody cares. I don't, I, and, and I'm not saying that to be smart. Nobody cares. But if you listen long enough, you'll find and you'll hear their pain point, what we call a pain point, and how can you supply what they need? That's just the bottom line. I got graphic designers on here. What do you say, Janae? Well, I was going to say that's why asking thoughtful questions is important because if you just ask in random questions, you don't care about the answer. You just you just asking questions. But if you ask thoughtful questions, then you are listening to the answer because you've asked them something yes. poignant. Something and you may not have what they need, but you can be a connector to someone who has what they're looking for. And now guess what? You'll always be remembered as the connector. You always be remembered as there are people who make a profession as connectors. I tell everybody, listen, you read the Bible. The, the, to me, I'll say one of the most important disciples was Andrew because he evidently had major influence. It was Andrew, the connector that brought most of the disciples to Christ because he had influence. Andrew said, I ain't got what you need, but I know somebody who does. He goes and gets his brother, Peter, right? He goes and grabs Philip. He goes and grabs everybody else. Guys, listen, he's a connector. So even if you can't supply what they need, right, by listening through thoughtful conversation, you can be a connector to someone who has what they need. George Smith said, please don't be intimidated by someone's stature. No, you can't be. You can't be. Um, Shauna Clark says there's passion and energy. I say this because I was that person intimidated by people's education level, titles, et cetera, feeling that my input wouldn't measure up. Here's the funny thing, right? Most of the people that we call ourselves intimidated by, and they're not even thinking like that. That's the messaging you told yourself. They all are human beings and love conversation. They actually get a thrill out of helping others. So if, if the person... And you, you might meet, you might say, well, pastor, that's not the case all the time. Yeah, I've met, I can count the number of people who had lofty titles that weren't approachable, maybe about four or five. Most of them, very approachable. I think I get them on my show. I think I get them on my podcast. I'm, I'm, people say, oh my God, I can't believe, 
I'm, you know, uh, believe it or not, people say, I can't believe I'm talking to, to Ralph Graves. Your energy is just, why can't you believe you're talking to Ralph Graves? You know, I, 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 this is what I love to do. It's what I love. It's what I love to do. Tiny Hopkins says this, when someone knows uh, that you are present into what they say, they're saying it goes a long way. It does. It does. Hey, Rico, thanks for joining. Um, who else is some? Oh, Joy Smith over here said, "Truth, there must be fun-loving people. They are they are the most fun-loving people, and sometimes um, are they're very down to earth. And, and you have crazy conversations. They do. Hey, hey, Debbie, good to see you on here. Deb, hope all all great. Hey, good morning, Maria. Thank you, you're on here um, from Minnesota. Always from Minnesota. Um, but yeah, guys, you can't be intimidated. I mean, we're talking about the art of small talk. All right, I got to talk about this because Lord World over on Instagram Live asked about this." And it's how do you start small talk? This is a mistake that we make all the time. We always, and at point number five, point number six, don't put up your yet, Janet. We always make the mistake of asking someone what they do for a living. And we associate what they do for who they are. All right? Like we, we kind of associate. I don't know, whatever the case may be. We, we kind of put, wow, they must be lofty because they do this. Listen, I was a police officer for 20 years. It was what I did. It never was who I am. I'm more than that. I'm an author, right? But I'm more than that. I wrote a book, but I'm more than an author. I pastor a church, but I'm more than a pastor. All right? We ask people, so what do you do for a living? And then we attach the importance of the conversation. You know what I used to tell people? And it was a shame because I was lying and the Lord asked the Lord to forgive me. I knew that when I was a police officer, if I told people I was, I would go to cookouts or whatever, oh, he a cop, he a cop. And depending upon how they felt about cops, like it, it, in the moment, it was how they treated me. So I started telling people I work at UPS. I wash airplanes. I, I did. I told them I did something they would never ask me anything about because I'd go to a cookout in Delaware and they asked me about a ticket. I'm a cop in Jersey. Why are you asking me about a ticket in Delaware? We stop asking people what they do. Watch this point number six. Ask a person, ask about a person's life, not their job. Ask about their life, not their job. Don't get around to it. How does that look like? Never ask someone what they do anymore. Instead, ask, how do you spend your time? How do you spend your time? They'll say, when I'm not working, then they might get into it there. But they might they might say, well, you know, ask them how to spend their time. Stop attaching value to people based upon what they do. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Stop attaching value to people based upon what they do. I should be able to say, I'm, I'm retired. They're retired from what? And be able to, but sometimes when I say retired, people think I don't do anything. No, I'm just retired from that. All right. And here's another thing that the word retirement is not in the Bible. So, you know, so stop looking for this. I'm going to retire. I'm not put here to retire. I'm put here to always work and produce. I'm retired from that season and I'm in a current season and I'll eventually retire from this season. Then I'll be in another season, but I'll always be working, always be at it. Always be going, always be working. So ask people about their life. Que you know, questions like this one open the door to more interesting conversations. If that person's initial response is work related, follow up with this. Well, what do you do when you're not working? Just keep asking questions. Share comments that relate to their story and to relate their story to yours. Well, I'm a so and so. Well, what are you doing when you're not doing that? I'm a writer. What are you doing when you're not writing? I'm a nurse. What are you doing when you're not doing healthcare? I'm a coach. I'm a trainer. I'm an influencer. What are you doing when you're not doing that? I'm a pastor. What are you doing when you ain't pastoring? You see what I'm saying? You see where this is going? I'm a graphic designer. Well, what are you doing when you ain't graphic designing? Now you're getting to small talk about the person. Now you're actually telling them, listen, I'm not attaching value to you based upon what you do. I'm a garbage man. I drive for waste management. First thing I'm going to say is thank you. Because without you guys, whole society would be disease written. You know, you're about to say something? No, I was agreeing with your thingy that you just said. Yeah. The okay. ball board asked a question. Maybe you guys can jump in and answer this question. It says, can you uh, give an example of how you started small talk um, with the waiter? Oh, that's easy. 
uh, with the waiter comes, you know, you just talk about the waiter and, and believe it or not, a lot of the small talk comes around the food. Tell me about this dish. Tell me about it. And they'll start telling you about the dish and you can see whether it's excitement on it or not. And you ask them if they've tried it and whether you're going to get it or not. Ask them if they tried it and you kind of talk to them what they've tried and what you've tried. And it begins small talk like that. You know, they'll start saying, well, I was out with my friend. I was out with my lady. I was out with whatever the case may be. It begins small talk. And it begins to happen like that. You know, I ask them their name. Hey, I tell them my name's Ralph. They're like that commercial say, you don't have to know their name. Why not? They can give you a false name. It doesn't make a difference. But you're calling them by their name, not just dealing with them by their job. Yeah, they, they will take care of you. But yeah, I, I start talking. My small talk with the waiter is usually around food. That's our common ground. I'm here to eat. They are serving the food. Tell me what's good. Tell me what you've tried. Let me see if I like what you've tried. And it starts from there. Man, I've had conversations. I've had conversations around kids. I've had conversations with my servers. I mean, it was crazy. You know, I, I, my wife has food allergies. We have conversations around that. Oh my God, I have the same food allergy. It's crazy because my wife carries around a food allergy card with, and if you have food allergies, doesn't mean you can't go out to eat. My wife has a card. We got made up. You know how you go to these little card places, you get your card made up. She has a list of allergies. Where's that called? Vistaprint. A list of her allergies on the card. And she hands it to the server. And they're like, mind blown. Like, this is awesome. And we start right there. Like, this helps me so much. I'll take this to the chef. Will you do that for me? I certainly will. Now you meet them, you meet the chef, you meet the manager, everybody's around your table, you're having conversation, you're laughing, they know your first name. You get, hey, we want you to try this. Will you try this for it's it's remarkable what can happen because of small talk. Yeah. Um, we had to do the verse of the day. Oh yes, the verse of the day. I'll get back to the comments. Verse of the day. Okay, here we go. Yeah. As you're absolutely smashing, becoming the best small talker. Don't get too wrapped up and forget Ephesians 4.29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. What we say has big impact, even in small talk. You guys hear that? Even the Bible talks about it. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. People say, the Bible says you don't curse. Bible don't tell you not to curse. Don't let any unwholesome, we're talking about communicating. Don't let any, unwhole, un, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, not yours, their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Joy Smith, I love what you say here. She says, Pastor, it goes back to the other programs about connecting. What are you wearing? And they smile, stuff like that. Yeah, ask somebody, what are you wearing? You know, you've been on your feet all day. I know your feet are killing you, man. Them shoes comfortable. You know, I, I, what do you wear? Or if there's a fragrance, guys. Now, women can say this to one another. Guys, don't ask a woman what she, don't, don't be a creep. All right? Small talk's not about you being a creep. It's about professional small talk. All right? Don't be a creep about it. Maria says this. I have a Facebook uh, group page called Share Because I Care. Our career does not classify who we are. You're right. All part of judgment. And we have to refrain from doing this. It's about their life, not about their job. Thank you, Maria, for sharing that. It's about their life, not about get used to not asking about people's jobs. And even when they tell you what their job is, no matter how you feel about what they do. They need to say thank you for your service. Thank you for what you do. Hey, you know what? Real quick. You know, who I really think I thank the waste management people and plumbers. I, I, I think I think the plumbers are the real heroes in society. Yeah, you know, plumbers, we're talking about. They bring the water in, they take the sewage out. Let your plumbing stop working. You ain't calling a doctor, a lawyer, a politician, you ain't calling your pastor, you ain't you are calling that plumber. Salute to all of the men and women who are in the plumbing trade and carpentry trade. That's, I'm gonna do a whole show about you. You all don't have, to, all of you don't have to go to college. You may not have the college aptitude, which is great, which is phenomenal. Trade people, I love all of you. I love all of you. The most important person in your building, even beyond electricity, 
to me is the plumber. But anyway, I don't even know where I was going. Where was I going, Janae? About asking. You're going to answer this question. What's that? You're going to answer this question. Oh, what question? Which one? I don't You're know. On the screen. I just jumped on. Okay, yes, I'm going to answer two questions. Thank you, Inez Cremetti. Hey, Ms. Cremetti. What about the shy person like me? Sometimes it's hard to begin small talk. Well, for a shy person like you, it just starts with asking a very thoughtful question. Remember, Inez, whoever's asking the question steers the entire conversation. We're stuck at the same table, right? This is our assigned seat. We're at the conference. We're stuck at the same table. There's some strangers there. Start by asking a thoughtful question and listening and ask a thoughtful follow-up. Yeah, like at the reception, like I had to do my little rounds and everything. And yeah. I went to every person basically and asked them the same question, which yeah. was just, are you enjoying yourself? Like, yeah. and they each had like, yes. And then they were just like, because of this reason or that reason. And then like, I was able to comment yeah. on what they had said and yeah. you know, all that stuff. So that was some, that was good small talk. That's a great way to start small talk. Are you enjoying yourself? I did the same thing. I had to walk around all the tables as well, making sure everybody was, was cool. But that's a great question. You're sitting across the table for somebody, I know, or depending on where you are, are you enjoying yourself this evening? It's great. Sorry. All right. I'm, I'm not even on. I'm on you come board. here often? Yeah, stop. Don't do that. You come here often. <laughs> hey, what's your sign? <laughs> okay. No, we don't do that. Um, <laughs> Rico said this, Pastor, to get back to what you were saying earlier. When I first got my car, people never said congrats. It was, how much was your car payment? <laughs> oh, man, I, I cut them people off, right? Right. What did I put down instead of saying congrats? That's an offensive conversation. Just say, hey, man, I'm happy for you. That's you all the way. Who was your salesperson? Instead of asking you all those questions, Rico, and instead of you asking people that question, where did you go? Who was your salesperson? You think they could help me? You probably would appreciate that line of questioning more. There's an art to small talk. If you don't know how to do it, you're going, you, you could run the risk of offending. Rico's not saying he was offended. I'm telling you that's very offensive to ask someone when they just got a new car, how much you paid for that? How much you pay for that? What are your payments? Hey, none of your business. My dad used to say this. If you have to ask how much it costs, you can't afford it. You start telling people that. If you got to ask me how much this costs, you can't afford it. Yeah, you sell them straight, Rico. You sell them my way. That's very offensive. You don't ask somebody that, right? If you got to ask somebody how much it costs, you can't afford it. Don't even ask me how much it costs. Get out of my pockets, all right? I can give you the name of my salesperson because it may cost you the same thing. It may not cost you the same thing. All right, here we go. I got to get done, y'all. I got two minutes left. Man, Janae, we're not going to do it, are we? There's three more. All right. Learn your story. Learn their story. Learn their story. Art or small talk. Learn their story. Learn their story. What does that mean? That means um, you ask questions. You learn the story about the people you're talking to. OK, learn their story. All right. You can you can you can ask their story or answer or find out their story through the questions. And you're building the process of building a strong, meaningful relationship when you know someone's story. All right. On the Unstoppable podcast, I try to tell people's stories because I want to build relationships with them. Externalize your focus. I'm almost done, guys. Give me give me give me one minute. Externalize your focus. Ask questions. Respond to the answers. Number nine. Number nine. And we'll repost this up. Share something very honest with them. Share something honest with them. OK. Want to make your small talk bigger. Share something that's very honest about a topic that's pertinent to you, okay? And finally, find common ground. All of this is the art of small talk. Find common ground. Find something you have in common with the person and your interest will be genuine. Genuine. If you're at the same conference, if you're at the same party, if you're at the same table, you have in common the people, the place. If you're in the same Zoom meeting, what you have in common is who invited you there, who got you there. Guys, I hope this was helpful. Was this okay, everybody? this all right? All right. I hope it was helpful, everybody. Guys, listen, my name is Pastor Ralph Graves Jr. Go to my website, Ralph at RalphGravesJr.com. 
Join the Unstoppable community. It's $10 a month. It's $10 a month and you get more of me. You can actually schedule a call with me. Get on my calendar and schedule a call. We can talk for a half hour, 30 minutes. I can I can help build. I can help pour into what you maybe maybe I can I can connect you with the right people, but it's all about personal growth. Ralphgravejr.com backslash community. It's ten dollars a month. You get on get on me with that. There's the unstoppable podcast. There's the unstoppable book. Podcast is over at Spotify, over on YouTube. You'll see some phenomenal people. And maybe I can get you on because I think all of you are phenomenal and amazing people. So, guys, master the art of small talk. I hope that helped you out today. Ladies, any final thoughts? Have um, a great day. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> small talk with someone. Small and, talk with somebody. And report back next week. And have a magnificent day and report back. So thank you for saying that to Shona and report back next week. Guys, I love you guys. My name is Ralph Graves Jr. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.